and welcome to Life for Nations Missions. Today we continue with World Congress, a session, a discipleship session for feeding on the world for life transformation. And I believe you have always been blessed by the World Congress and you are always invited to join us every Sunday, both on life and on ground. That is on Facebook Live and on ground. Hallelujah. All right, this morning we shall be taking the theme Sons of God. Sons of God. In bracket, the divine family. Sons of God, the divine family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, what do we mean and what do we have in mind when we talk about sons of God? Now, it is to address some situation that we see that is actually confusing a lot of people. One of the major mistakes that many people that are called by the name Christians have been making is to think that they are converts from religions to another religion. To them, they have been a, a, a Muslim or they have been a, a Hindu or they have been whatever religion they practice and now they want to practice Christianity. You know, they see it as one of the religions I have come into practice. I've seen many people say Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion, but in their actions and in what they do, they are no different from the ones that they call religion. Now, even those who are non-Christians out there have the concept in their mind that what you that claim to be a Christian is doing is just one more religion. You say, oh, I am not a Christian, I am a Muslim. Oh, I am not a Muslim, I am a Christian. Oh, I am not a this, I am a this. Oh, I am not a this, I am a this. When we begin to see it in that light, it means that we really misunderstand what message that we received through the scriptures. Did Jesus Christ come to establish a religion? Somebody say, oh, Jesus Christ is not even a Christian. Eh, somebody say, Jesus is a Christian. I know who can do that Jesus is. This one is eternal. Oh, it's a very big mistake that have really, really affected a lot of people. And so we must look at it critically from the scriptures and know. I really don't blame those people that see Christianity as it were, as religion. Because looking at what the people that call themselves Christians do, and believe in terms of creed, in terms of cathedrals, in terms of, you know, other types of formalities and formalities, what they call having the form of godliness, as it were. We simply see nothing but what? Religion. So there's no difference. Uh, you go to Wikipedia and you ask, you check. They say, okay, what uh, does Christians say about this? What does Muslims say about this? What does the Hindus say about this? What does this other people say about this? What does this other group say about this? It's all about what this one say and what the other one say. It is not about that. It is not about that. It is purely about something different from what we are doing. And we call it Christianity. Today, I want to point it clear that Jesus Christ did not come to establish or create a religion or try to make the believers become an upgraded Jew. We have, in fact, we see a lot of Judaism, which is actually a religion, being practiced. In the other sense, in this sense, the Jewish so-called religious belief is actually not a religion, but tradition. Their village, you know, what their culture and traditions, which was later put together and called religion. And some of them who are Jews don't even practice it as it were. So religion is practiced. This is not about practice. You say, oh, I am practicing Christianity. You know, to, to practice Christianity. We need to practice Christianity. It's not, we don't practice Christianity. Some people say, oh, Christianity is a way of life. It's not a way of life. In fact, the term Christianity or Christian was not even given by Jesus. It was people who saw these people that have become Jesus Christ in, in the human form as it were, that called them what? Christians. But they called them those things in a derogatory manner. 
which you know eventually the Christian the people accepted it and they were they became identified by that. Jesus Christ did not come to create a formality, not come to create a temple, not come to create one thing or the other that people should know all these things that we are doing today. I'm not saying you shouldn't gather in a temple, build a cathedral, but don't say that that is what Christ came for. If not, he would have built his own and established his own. He didn't do that. Because that concept narrowed us down to something else. And if you check the correct narrative, what you have is another thing. So we want to know and understand that Jesus did not come to raise any form of religion, nor did he come to raise servants. He didn't come to raise servants. No, we have servants of Jesus, servants of Jesus. He didn't come to raise slaves. Neither did he come to just raise followers, followers, or people who are practicing his teachings. No, he came to raise sons and children for God. He came to raise sons for God, children of God. Jesus, the son of God, became the son of man so that he can make sons of men, sons of God. So it's a family affair. It is divine family that is coming to create. It did not come to create organization as it were. It did not come to create, yes, we can create organizations, but that is not what we are. That is not what we are. We may look like, oh, this is a Christian temple, this is a Muslim a mosque, this is a Hindu temple. This is a, that is not what he just came to add to what is already existing. No. If we have that understanding, it will clear up our relationship with God. That it is not a relationship of master servant or relationship of a deity and a people who are coming to in, in quote, worship, but a relationship that has to do with family, father and children. In John chapter 1, I'm going to read some scriptures to portray what I'm saying. I'm going to explain them briefly. In John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, the Bible says, But to all who did what? Who received Jesus. He gave them the right to become sons of God or children of God. Those who believe in his name. They were not born of human will. It's not a physical birth. But they were born of God. God, not of the will of man, not of the flesh, but they were born of God. God becomes their father. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 to 17. For you have not received the spirit of bondage that makes you to fear. When you look at religion, it's all about fear. No. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of what? Adoption. Where we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. Children of God. And if we are children, then we are heirs. And if we are heirs, then we are joint heirs with Christ. Heirs of God, those who are inheriting what God has. A heir is one who inherits from his father. It is inheritance because it is a family affair. It is not a religious affair. It is not a societal affair. It is not, it is not a, 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 a master-servant relationship. It is family, divine family. First John chapter 3 verse 1 says, See what great love the father has lavished on us, that we should become what? Sons of God. Children of God, children, homo, children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is because they don't know him. Even we ourselves, that cross ourselves, that we really know ourselves. We want us to understand that we are the children, children of God, children of God. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. But when the fullness of time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem them which are under the law, that we might receive adoption of sons. Of what? 
sons. And because you are sons, God has sent into you the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, you are no more servant, but son. And if you are son, then you are heir of God through Christ. In other words, Christ came to make you heir of God, son of God. You are adopted into the family of God. God, the father and his son, is bringing you into that union of father and son. Giving you the same privilege. Where I am, there you should be also. The level I am with my father, that is the level you are. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15. So that you may become what? Blameless and pure. Children, children, sons of God without fault in a rapt and crooked generation that you will shine among this world that is crooked and corrupted like stars in the sky. You shine as stars. You manifest the glory of your father. If we understand these things, all this religious just mumbo jumbo, creed, that, and that, and that, and that. We, you know, you see Christianity as a, as a religion is falling on a daily basis because what they are doing is based on a faulty foundation. If the foundation be neglected, be destroyed, what shall they, there will be no right thing you can do. I'm going to say, what shall the righteous do? It means that when the foundation is destroyed, there is nothing right you can do because the foundation is wrong. We must understand that this is family. This is not religious organization. We may have organizations, but that is not it. It's just a means of reaching out to call people to become members of this divine family. It's not a temple. We're not building temples. We're not building, we are not building sacred places. We are building family. Say, so I will build my church. That word church is the word for the assemblage of God's children. Homo chineke. God's children. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through his suffering. Both the one who makes people holy and the people he makes holy are of the same family. So that Jesus is not ashamed to call them my brothers and sisters, not my servants, not my slaves, not my followers. Yes, you can see all these terminologies here, and I'm going to show you how why it was like that. But the ultimate purpose is not servanthood, it's not followership, it's not worshipership, it is family, brothers and sisters of one father, not the human form of fatherhood. But the fatherhood of the divine, where God himself has produced everything. From him, all things come. God is ultimate. Now, let us understand this. That God created humanity to be his children. In 1 John 3, verse 2, the Bible says, Behold, now we are sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be for we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. As he is, so are we. He is the son of God, so are we, sons of God. He said, oh, everything that my father has, he has given to me. So Jesus Christ inherited everything that his father has. And by making us co brothers and sisters as himself, it means that we have also that same right over all that his father has. That is why he says that to, to them that believe on him, he gave them the right, the privilege, the, the, the document, the signed warrant to become sons of God, children of God. I want to point out the issue of children, children, sons, sons, sons. Jesus Christ, the son of God. In Christ, we have been adopted into that sonship. But that adoption became necessary because of something. God created humanity to be his children. He did not create Adam to be a mere one of the creatures. He created him to be his own son. So that he can have dominion over the earth, just like he had dominion over heaven. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. God created Adam to be called the son of God. He was only, he was, you know, the only creature that was created in the image and in the likeness of God himself. Yes. Angels were not created in the image and the likeness of God. Of God. Animals were not created in the image and in the likeness of God. Only man said, let us make humans. Let us make man in our own image. Let us, let us produce man. That was the first bet. The first production of humanity to the world. Today we're talking about the second bet, which is born again, being born again. Now, if you read the book of Luke chapter 3, verse 22 to 23 and 38, you will see talking about Jesus Christ and his ancestry. He says, verse 23 says, And Jesus himself began at, at about 30 years of age, being as it was supposed, because he is not the son of Joseph, being as it was supposed, the son of God, which was the son of Heli, sorry, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam, which was the son of God. So Adam was created to be a son. He was not created to be a, a normal creature, an animal. He was not created to be dust. Yet God formed the body of man from the dust of the earth, but the man himself is not dust. The man himself is created and fashioned like God. In fact, God reproduced himself in man and put him in the body of clay. And that's why that clay became, you know, alive, was animated, as it were. But something happened. Adam fell from that level of glory. Mm -hmm. He lost the glory of God, the glory of sonship. He died, as it were. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. As by one man sin came to the world and death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. And because all have sinned, they have fallen short of the glory of God. That glamour and that glory and the splendor of sonship went off. Just like when the prodigal son left the father and went out, the mentality of servitude became his, 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 his narrative, his way of life. So when Adam fell from that glory of God, from that sonship of God, he fell further and was known as nothing but dust because the real essence of God was removed. That image, that sonship was no longer there as it were. And so God said, dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. He became relegated to dust. Remember, he was not inferior to angels. But because of his fall, he became lower than angels. So for Jesus Christ to bring him out, Jesus Christ had to become lower than angels, a little lower than angels as we are, so that he can become like the fallen man. So that it, when he when it comes down to them at that level of fall, he can pick them up back to their level in sonship. Hallelujah. So, having lost sonship, Adam was more like a what? Servant. You shall till the ground and what you shall sweat. You shall struggle. You shall suffer. God's restoration plan was to raise man back to sonship in glory. Was to bring us back because we are in Adam when Adam fell. And that is why all that, that falling was not only attributed to Adam, but attributed to us. And so if we are in Christ, the rising of Christ is not only attributed to Christ, who is the second Adam, but also attributed to us who have become the, the, the product of the second Adam. Hallelujah. So Jesus, in God's redemptive plan, came to restore us to sonship. Removing the bodily nature of dust, which is mortality, and making man to become celestial eventually, and receiving a new immortal glorious body. He said, we don't know what we look like. When we see him, we shall see that we are like him. This is a process that is ongoing that will eventually be cumulated on the day of resurrection. We are our true nature in him will be made open. 
when we will lose mortality and pick up immortality. We will stop being frail children of dust, like some hymnals will say. Hallelujah. That is what Jesus came to do, to remove both spiritually, making us children of God. For as many that are born of the Spirit are spirits of God. He that is born of the Spirit is spirit. So he spiritually gave us new birth, and it's also good to give us physical birth, as it were, our new, our fallen nature body, which is now regarded as dust, will be changed to a new body. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 48 to 53, it says, As the earthy, so are also those who have the earth. And as the heavenly, so are also those who are of heaven. And as we have borne the image of the fallen man who is earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Hallelujah. And Paul Adam has said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, shall sound and the dead shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be what? Changed. For this corruption, this dust body, must be put must be put off, so that we can put on what? Incorruption. For this mortal must also put on what? Immortality. We have dropped the first stage from our spiritual realm, when you become born again, when you are now in Christ, you become a new creature in the realm of the spirit between you and God because God is spirit. And then the bodily own is going to happen at the end, but that is what you must think. Think of yourself from within. Say, now that you have risen with Christ, set your mind on things above, not on things beneath. What is above? We say we have borne the image of the man from the earth. Now we are bearing the image of the man from above. So set your mind on things above. Because right now it may not look like we are who we are, but as we set our mind on things above, we begin to manifest the nature of who we truly are, children of God. I am coming. Now, look at the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. In that story, Jesus showed us how the prodigal son came back to his father. But he came back considering himself a servant. And his brother, who never left the father, who was around his father like a religious man, as it were, considered himself a slave. Now, but as soon as they both met their father, their father corrected their impression immediately. Look at what the scripture says. It says, the man, the boy says, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no longer worthy to be called thy son. Make me what? Make me one of thy hired servants. Is that not how we are? We see ourselves as servants. You know, oh no, we are servants. We are faithful servants have come to you. We are servants. But the father said to the servants, who are the servants? The angels. He said to the servants, bring forth the best robe. The boy was expecting his father to treat him like a servant, but his father treated him as a son. Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring in his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring a fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and marry for this my son. He didn't say this my servant, as the boy wanted him to return him. But this, for this my son was dead. For he who are dead in sin and trespasses has he quickened in Christ. For this my son was dead, now he's what? Alive. He was lost, now he has been what? Found. In his dead state, he considered himself servant. In his lost state, he was what? Servant. Religion makes you to see yourself as servant. We are not in religion, this is family affair. In fact, Remove the idea of religious movement and religious this, religious leaders, religious that, religious that. Throw it off. If you must understand this thing, it's not a, there was no religion in the Garden of Eden. It was father and son relationship before he fell. It was God that was calling men. But the Bible says, and when Seth was born, men began to call upon the Lord. It's no longer God calling the men. Men began to call the Lord. It became as if the Lord is hiding and they are seeking him, 
Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. But before that time, it was the Lord that is calling. Now, when it comes to Jesus Christ, it was, we, it was it we who asked God to send Jesus Christ? No. He was him who did it. He was him who said, come unto me. What, it was not we who say, we, we are coming unto you. He said, come unto me. My son was dead and alive. He was born and his found. Let us what be merry. Now, look at, about, look at the story of his, young, his elder brother in 20, verse 28 and 31. He said, the older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But look at what he answered his father. He answered his father and said, look, all these years I have been slaving. Have you seen many Christians, as it were, because they, they, they follow that narrative of Christian as a religion, they have been slaving for you. Never disobeyed any commandment. So you see our relationship with God about is about servanthood, slavery, slaving, and obeying of what commandments. Eh? You have to keep his commandment. Oh. Eh? You can't keep his commandment. Oh. Hmm. Hallelujah. He said, I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed any of your orders. Yet you never gave me a young goat. You see why many people believe that I have served God, I have slaved for God, I have toiled, toil on, toil on, believers. You are toiling, toiling. But my brother, all this thing I'm struggling, all this thing I'm laboring, just so that God can, so that I can make heaven, so I can make this, I can make that. That is what your mind sees because that is what has been loaded into your head all this your life. You are not called into struggling to, to please God as it were. You are called into family. Look at what the father told him. After he said, I have slaved for you. You have not even given me a one go. That's why many people are blaming God. God cannot even, God have not even done, God have not done this one. God has not done this one. And they are going elsewhere to look for help. He said, You have not given me even a young goat so that I can celebrate with my friends. I have been slaving for you. But this son of yours, yeah, he even recognized the other one as son, not even as a servant. He said, this servant of yours. This son of yours. You know, sometimes we feel that servanthood is superior to sonship. God's servant, God's servant, God's servant is so sweet to say God's servant. You like that one. You know, when God's servant, when you're God's servant, when you're God's servant, it suits you too much. So he called him son because he feel that servanthood is superior to sonship. When his this your son, son of yours who has squandered your pro property with prostitutes came home, you killed fattened car for him. What did the father say? He corrected that impression immediately. He said, "My son." He didn't say my slave. He said, "My son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours." Because sonship talks about inheritance, not slavery, not servitude. So the prodigal son's mentality and that of his brother is not what we are practicing and we call it Christianity. When we come, we call it incense. And then we put one thing, we bow, we do like this. With formality, having the form that looks godly, but denying the substance. Like white painted sapulka. Let us do like this. My brethren in the Lord, let us sing. Let us do this. Be careful. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let everybody be silent before him. Oh. All you are doing is trying to. But when you finish and go back to your father's house, you are freer. Uh -huh. You consider your earthly father a more better father and see God as your master slave driver. You say, if your earthly father can be nice to you, how much more your heavenly father? You were born of the earth, now you are born of the heaven. You are born of men. Now you are born of God. That is taken birth. That's called a called new birth. Born again. It is not change of character. It is a rebirth. It is being risen from death to life. From being lost to being found. It's family. 
A friend of mine wrote recently that he lost, lost his son about three years ago. He's still looking for his son. He's still searching for his son. He's still worried. He's still, he's still worried to get his son back. And we pray that he finds him. The same way God was so worried that man got lost. Man got missing. When your son is lost and you don't see him again, it's like as though he's dead. That is what he said. My son was lost, now he's found. My son was dead, now he's alive. Let us throw away that prodigal son's and his brother's mentality of servitude and slavery. And know that our relationship with God is not based on service. It's not based on slavery, but based on family, sonship. Oh, we are so happy to call ourselves servants of God, slaves of God. And, uh, you know, and see Jesus, you know, as our grand master. Master Jesus, Master Jesus, my master, my master, my master. Jesus Christ did not come to make you his servant so that he becomes your master. But you tell me, oh, in the Bible, Jesus Christ was called master and he didn't rebuke them. I'm going to show you something. Oh, Jesus Christ, you are my, my servants and he didn't rebuke them. But I'm going to show you something from the scriptures. I understand why that is like that at that time. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is not our grandmaster. He didn't come to be our master. Yes, Jesus Christ is Lord. What kind of lordship it is? That lordship means firstborn, our senior brother. Not Lord in terms of those who lord over people. We see God as a deity that we are struggling to get his attention and pity. In fact, it sounds so humbling to say, I, I am a servant of God, or I am a slave of God, as it were. But what did the Bible say? The Bible says, God has sent into us the spirit of his son that makes us to cry, Abba, what? Father, Abba. Father, they mean something. Abba, Father. So, see, so you are no more servants, but sons. If you are son, then you are heir through Christ. So that means that we are the time we were servants. Before Christ came, we were servants, we were slaves, we were everything you can think of. Lord, master, everything is correct. But at the turn of the new covenant, all these things became past tense. We are going to see it. Jesus himself when he was revealed to the prophets of old in the prophecies of Isaiah and this of them, how did they call him? They called him the suffering servant. Even the disciples who never got this understanding, when they were praying, they say, oh, your holy child, uh, they call Jesus Christ your servant. Your servant, Jesus. And that's why most religions see Jesus as senior. He's just a prophet of Allah, prophet of God, prophet of that. He's not a prophet of anything. He is the son of God who is coming to replicate himself through us. He said, if you don't have the spirit of Christ in you, you are not of him. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, before he died, was calling his disciples, my servants. Servant this, servant that. But let us look at what he did. Before he died. What did he say? He says, if any man serve me, is that also? If any man serve me, let him what? Follow me, servant, follower. And where I am, there shall what? My servants be. If a man serves me, him will my father honor. John chapter 12, verse 26. So at this point, he was calling them what? Servants. And he wanted them to act like servants. But just before he went to the cross, he said something spectacular. In John chapter 15, verse 15, what did he say? He said, henceforth, hallelujah, from now going, I do not call you servants. Remember before he said, if you serve me, you will be where I am. Now he now said, I do not call you servants anymore. Paul that says, you are no more servants. That means you were servants, indeed. If you are not in Christ, you are a servant. 
as, as a master pitieth his servant, so the Lord pitieth you because you are a servant. But as a son, you are not, your father does not give you things out of pity. He gives you things because you are entitled to them. You are my son. You have always been with me and all I have belonged to you. Look at what he said. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for servants do not know what his master does. But I call you what? Friends. For all things have, that have, my father has shown me, I have made known to you. So the second grade that Jesus Christ promoted them, promoted them from servanthood toward friendship. But and many of you Christians are, have kept yourself at the level of friendship. I will be a friend of Jesus till I die. I will be a friend of Jesus till I die. Oh, I will be a friend of Jesus. Jesus is my friend. I am glad Jesus is my friend. He's my friend. No. No. He went, that was a level. He took them from servanthood to what? Friendship. And in friendship, you only know, you can only come and tell your friend what your father has. No, my father, my father has, you no. Know, my friend, my good friend, my father has this, though. my father has that, though. my father has this, though. I will give you small. My father just bought me uh, 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 two two bottles of Coke. Take one. I'll share with you small. <laughs> now, uh, okay, go, go, go. My father is coming. Go home, go home. My, you're my friend, though. You're my friend, but uh, you know, you, you know your limit. I'm going to the bedroom to discuss my father, so don't come. You're my friend. That is what they were, friends. But look at what he said again. In Remember, the first one was in John 12. Servant, servanthood, John 12. Friendship, John 15. Now look at what he said in John 20, verse 17. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. Touch me not. For I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So they are no longer what? Servants. They are no longer what? Friends. They are now what? My brothers and sisters. And he said to them, I am ascending to my father, and your father to my God, and your God. So it is not a matter of friendship. I'm not a friend of Jesus. I'm not a servant of Jesus. I may serve, but that does not make me a servant. I may relate. That does not make me friend. That's that's a that's you know, between friends. Some people will say, Ozis, Ozu Shimushi, any kawanala, which means when the cops begin to smell, a friend that is closer than a brother will run away. It is not the brothers and sisters. When somebody dies in the place, they say, Doesn't he have relatives? Not friends, relatives. Are, are you what who are you? I, I am his friend. No, no, no. Don't, I want to see his brother, his wife, his brother, his children, his father, his mother. Not friends, please. <laughs> That's a point where a friend will reach. He has to stop. But family is family. That is why God is bringing us into that level. Jesus Christ took them from what? From those who are dead to what? Friends, the servants. From servant level to what? Friend level. From friend level to what? Sonship, family, brothers and sisters. So don't go and tie yourself at friendship. I'm a friend of Jesus. You know, friends of Jesus assembly. You must go beyond friends of Jesus. Go to sons of Jesus, sons of God, not even sons of Jesus, sons of God. But we are sons of God through Christ. That is what his father sent him to do, to bring sons to him, to bring sons to glory, to bring sons to him, not to bring friends home. Bring your friends home. He's not bringing his friends home. He's not bringing his servants home. He's bringing his brothers and sisters that his father through him have paid the price to adopt them. When a child is adopted into a family, he has the legal right with the biological children. If they mistreat him, they are legally wrong. So we have the rights that Jesus Christ has. He brought us onto his own level. Now that you have risen with Christ. So you know that you are no longer servants. You are no longer slaves. You are no longer friends. You are much more than that. 
the way we do in church, we do things in church, church. You know, I'm going to church, you can't, sorry, we are going to church. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That is not it, my brother and sisters. If you are truly born again, if you are not born again, this does not concern you. It can only concern you when you accept to become part of the family. Say, but as many as receive him, to them he gives the right. Until you receive him, you have no right of sonship. And that is what evangelism is all about. Evangelism is about Calling those who are dead to come back to life. Calling those who are lost. You, we are sons. God is calling you back. If you refuse to come, if the prodigal son refused to come back, he would die and waste there. His father has been waiting for him. That's why first of the cross sang this song. My Lord is waiting for you. Come home, sinner. Because my Lord, my Lord here means my elder brother. My brother, big brother is waiting for you. Come home, sinners, go home. Jesus is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh, sinner. The sinner there means the dead and the lost. Come home. When we do evangelism and crusade, we are not trying to make you church members of our religious organization. We are trying to bring you into the family of God. We come to the family of God. The family of God doesn't mean our, our, our church. It's our church, it's the family of God. The family of God is universal. All our church, the, the, the things you call church, are just meetings where some children of God meet to reach out to great other people who are supposed to be children of God who have been put into slavery under the powers of darkness. He said, Until the son becomes matured, he is under tutors. Now you are no longer under tutors. Come back. Tutor. Religion is tutor. Leave it. Hallelujah. The way we do. Jesus Christ, master. A religious figure. Prophet. No. He didn't come to teach us how to worship God. No. This is not about temple religious worship. No. Our, the way we worship today is that we are Worship the King, oh glorious above all, oh, we worship you. Yes, we worship God, but that is not, we are not called into to worshiping, we are called into family. Worship, there, is, there is respect and honor in the family, but that does not make you a, 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 a non important person who is coming to fall down, to, to bow down to somebody who, if you make a mistake, like he will kill you because you're not part of the family. If your brother is a king, you are a prince. There are certain things other citizens cannot say, but you can talk to your brother who is the king. Hallelujah. I believe you are understanding me. So it's not about ministry, belonging to a church organization or belonging to a religion. No, it is about divine family. Look at what Peter said in 2 Peter 1 verse 4. So we are by, are we giving exceeding great and precious promises that by this you might become what? Partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 1 Peter 1, 3 to 4. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has reproduced us. He has given new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. That is what we have been brought into. An inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. That is the message that the apostles are bringing to us. That is what the Bible is all about, to tell us who we are, what God has in mind, and what he has done, and how we can become part of this family. Because that is our right, originally, that we lost. God is looking for you. We are not the one looking for God. Uh, search, search for the Lord. Some, there are some terminologies you see in the Bible that look as if we are looking for God. Or that we are servants. Like we say, Paul, after all, Paul said, I, Paul, servant of God. Eh? I, Paul, servant of God. Or I, Paul, a slave of God. Yet, Paul can decide to call himself whatever. You know, sometimes when you do that, it, it looks it look humbling. Remember when Jacob called his brother Esau, my lord. 
your servant because he was he's scared. Paul, Paul did a lot of things, so he felt that, in fact, the, I am the least, the best thing, in fact, I am more of a servant, servant, uh, slave. Don't follow that Paul's terminology and call yourself. It is St. Paul who also wrote and said, we are no more servants. We are not slaves. So, until we stop seeing ourselves as servants, as slaves, as mere worshippers, or religious big gods, we will be no different from the people that call themselves religious people. We cannot manifest the glory of He who has called us out of darkness into His glorious light. Romans 8 verse 13 says, The eager expectation of the creatures is for the manifestations of the sons of God. And 1 Peter 2 9 says, But ye, a choosing generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises, the glory of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are always contending with this idea every time. That is why today we know we are, we are sons of God. Tomorrow we go back to the same thing. We keep, we keep going forth and on, off and on. But from today, know that God in Christ is calling you not to be a servant, not to be a friend, not to be a slave, but to be his own children. You can serve him as his son. You can worship him as his son, but not like, I don't want to worship from afar. <laughs> okay? Praise the Lord. So, are you ready to become his son wherever you are if you have not become a son you are just a servant you are just a friend you are just a religious a christian religious member you are a convert from islam to christianity you are a convert from islam, hinduism to christianity and you are looking for what to practice then it's time for you to come to become a son jesus is calling you but as many that will receive him to them he gives the power to become sons of god even to them that believe on his name. Just ask him to come into your heart. The Lord said, Jesus, Lord Jesus, my master, my Lord. No, but my brother. That lordship of Jesus means my senior brother. That is the lordship we're about. That is the, the real meaning of Lord. It means the one who is first among us. He said, you have become the first among many brethren. Say, my brother, come into my life. How does it come to your life? The Holy Spirit comes to live in you, and that makes you a child of God. For He has given us the spirit of what? Sonship. And if you are already born again and you have been seeing yourself as a, a slave, a servant, a, a mere friend, and a mere worshiper, you can go beyond that with this understanding. This is who you are now. And when you do that, you will see your mind and your life go into another level. Of divine transformation because you are a member of the divine family. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for everyone that have listened to me this morning. And I trust that for this understanding, we will enter into a better realm through the understanding that you have given to us. He said, now that we have risen with Christ, we should set our mind on things above. And that is what we are doing this morning. As we set our mind to this relationship of Father and Son, we will walk in the dominion that he has given to us and partake in the inheritance we have in the sense. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. If you have any question on what you have thought or you are confused in any way, you are free to call, you are free to ask, and we will direct you better. You can always come around and meet us one-on-one -on -one and we'll talk, or you can send your message through WhatsApp, through Facebook. All the numbers are there. And if you do that, we will not hesitate to discuss and to relate with you, give you details. Hallelujah. Now we're going to give an offering. This is the first Sunday of the month, and you are to package your Thanksgiving offering. We package Thanksgiving offering. All the offerings we give are to support the work of the ministry. That is one of your responsibility as a child of God is to ensure that the work of your father is going on well through your financial support. So package it and send have a tight offering, whatever it may be, you can send across. The links are all there. Father, accept our offering we give.
to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are confused, just call and they will tell you how to do it. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord shed his hands on you and may you enjoy his shalom now and always in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you for being with us in World Congress today. We will see you again next Sunday. Hallelujah. You are blessed.